we left our previous slide on a quite intriguing point. Here, I deliberately left our integrant on the canvas. Because quite often, the very appearance of the canvas gives us the idea about possible closure of the contour. It's always a good idea to split our integrant into a multivalued part and single-valued part. Here, the key feature of our single-valued part is its evenness, namely its symmetry with respect to the change of z to minus z. It happens that in the majority of cases where our single-valued part is even, we should open up the dumbbell to extend it along the entire real axis and close it with semicircles rather than full circles, like this. So let's see how the computation changes with a different contour. Again, our closed contour integral is split into four parts. C plus part runs along the upper bank of the branch cut. It's nothing but our original integral, as usual. Then there is C minus part running along the negative real axis. Plus the infinitesimal circular integral and plus the integral along the large semicircle. We already proved that the circular integrals vanish in our previous slide. The very fact that these are semicircular integrals doesn't affect change our reasoning. So our closed contour integral is again reduced to the combination of its linear parts C plus and C minus. Let's express C minus part via the original integral. Last time we failed due to the flip of sign. C minus part gave us the original integral with the minus sign, which led to its cancellation. Let's see how the situation changes here. To compute C minus integral, we need to introduce parameterization consistent with our choice of the regular branch of the log function. For example, we have two obvious choices. Z equals rho times e to plus minus i pi. Which one to choose? Well, to answer this question, let's find the value of our log function at some point on the real negative semi-axis. Z equals minus x. According to our general rule, we choose some reference point on the upper bank of our branch cut, connect it with this point in question, and extract the change of the argument of our log function. So, log of minus x is equal to the log of the modulus of the ratio of minus x divided by x0 plus i0 plus log of x0 plus i0 plus i delta argument of z. The z arrow obviously rotates by pi in the counterclockwise direction, so delta argument of z is pi. The log of the modulus of x0 plus i0 and the log just of x0 plus i0 cancel out. So what we are left with is log of minus x is equal to the log of modulus of x plus i pi or log of x. So now we see that the negative real exist parameterization consistent with the choice of our regular branch is z equals to rho times e to i pi, not minus i pi or 3 i pi or something. So let's write down the integral itself. Logarithm of z is equal to log of rho plus i pi. dz is simply minus d rho. Due to the fact that the single valid function is even, it doesn't change when we plug in z equals minus rho into it. This is where the evenness of the single valid function comes on stage. So we have i c minus is equal to the integral from plus infinity to zero, log of rho plus i pi divided by the same denominator, rho squared plus 1 squared, minus 0. And as before, let's split this integral into two parts. And let us switch the limits of integration. And now pay attention to the additional minus sign in the differential of d rho. So now we have the integral from 0 to plus infinity, log rho, d rho, divided by the denominator, which is nothing 
but our initial integral, but now with plus sign and plus i pi and then the remainder term. So we achieved our goal. Due to the correct choice of the closed contour, now its constituents add up rather than cancelling out as before. And finally, the closed contour integral is equal to the double the original integral plus the remainder term. And now let's use the Cauchy residue theorem to compute the closed contour integral. But before we go any further, let me draw your attention to the structure of the expression representing our closed contour integral. The first part is 2 times our original integral and it's purely real, while the second part, the remainder term, is purely imaginary. So when we get our answer, it will be again some complex number. So we will equate the real part of this complex number to our original integral and its imaginary part to our remainder term. And now let's address the poles of our integrand. So the integrand has two second order poles, z equals plus minus i. Only one of them lies inside our integration contour. So the closed contour integral is equal to 2 pi i times the residue of our integrand and point z equals i. And so let's compute the residue. As we deal with second order pole, the computation of the residue requires the differentiation. So the definition is the derivative of f of z times z minus i squared. So let's factorize the denominator of our integrand according to the position of its zeros. And make the necessary cancellation. And then we perform the differentiation. One always a factor comes from the differentiation of the log function. And minus 2 over z plus i cubed comes from the differentiation of the denominator. And you see that the computation of the residue requires the knowledge of the log function at point z equals i. So let's compute it. As always, we choose some reference point somewhere on the upper bank of our branch cut, x0 plus i0, connect it with their i point by some most contour, and extract the change of the argument of the log function. So delta argument of z is obviously pi by 2. And now we write down the standard formula for the regular branch of the log function. Log of i is equal to log of the modulus of i divided by x0 plus i0 plus the log of x0 plus i0 without modulus sign and plus i times the change of the argument, so i pi by 2. Now, as before, the log of the modulus of x0 plus i0 and the log of x0 plus i0 are the same, so they cancel out. The log of modulus of i is simply 0. So the log of i is now just i pi by 2. So let's collect all the terms together. So the residue of f now yields 1 over i times minus 4 minus 2 i pi by 2 divided by minus 8 i. So we get minus 1 by 4 i plus pi by 8. And as a result, our closed contour integral is given by the following complex number, 2 pi i times the following bracket. So it's simply pi squared i by 4 minus pi by 2. And on the other hand, it's equal to 2i where i is our original integral plus the remainder term. And finally, we got our original integral. It's simply equal to minus pi by 2, while our remainder integral comes as bonus. And it's equal to pi by 4. 
So the lesson we learned from this example is as follows. The very structure of the integral dictates the shape of the closed contour. Sometimes the most natural choice of the contour leads to complications and we have to experiment. In our next example, we will deal with the case where the deformation of the contour leads to more complications and we have to learn how to avoid them. So, till our next slide.